Good morning, folks. I've got a pretty special episode for you today. So it is Friday. It's my last weekend here in Dallas. I'm heading to Austin on Monday. I'm going to put in a 12-hour session over the Las Colinas card house. And I'm also going to film every single hand I play, even if I just raise it up, see bet the flop, give up turn. I'm going to film everything. Hopefully get 100 or so hands, maybe if we're lucky. Uh, but for now, I need to go get some coffee and some breakfast. It's early. It's like 9 a.m., but... I want to get to the casino around noon, play till midnight. Ah, let's get to it. Good, and you? Uh, can I grab a 16 ounce iced almond milk latte, please? Hey. Morning. Good, and you? Very nice almond milk. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much. You don't want to have your shoes? No, all good, thank you. Yeah, no worries, man. You were wearing the Octarix jacket. Yeah, yeah, you remember. Thank you, sir. No worries, have a great night. All right. This is the best coffee in Dallas. Gas coffee, it's on Denton Street. Nice almond milk latte. People here are also incredibly nice, but that's coffee. Let's go get breakfast. All right, guys, that is breakfast sorted over here at Chop Shop. Uh, I either come here or a place called Taco Mex for Mexican breakfast. A little weird, but you know, had a nice little turkey club. We're gonna head back home, study a bit, shower up, and then get ready to go play some poker. All right, you guys, it's now 11.05 a.m. Now, normally I'd use this time to get started on some video editing or head to the gym, depending on what day it is. But I stayed up late editing videos yesterday, so I wouldn't have to today. Uh, I've got about half an hour for up to head to the poker room, so I'm gonna get a little bit of studying done over here. Got my smoothie, and I'll see you guys shortly when we head to the card room. Welcome to the Hand Histories, folks. We have 57 hands to cover, so a lot of these are gonna be just super rapid fire. Just get through them and on to the next hand. It was a very fun session. Lots of downs, lots of ups and downs and ups and downs, and a ton of interesting hands. There's a lot to learn from a bunch of these hands, so let's get straight into it. In the first hand, we have Ace-Jack offsuit in the big blind, cut off his open, and now small blind has called. With the dead money from small blind, it makes squeezing a lot more attractive, so I'm going to go ahead and raise this up. If the small blind didn't call, we would probably just flat this most of the time. Uh, my sizing is 4.5x plus 1 per limper for squeezes, as squeezes are quite large. So raise up to 110, and it folds round. Okay, so I did miss one hand in this entire session, and it was a hand right before this. I had king jack offsuit and 3-bet a high jack open, and he folded, so not a big one. But this is only four hands later after the big blind hand... Uh, we have ace-jack offsuit in the cutoff. We have an early position raise. Not too attractive to re-raise this, and we can just flat this pretty well in live game. So I flat here, small blind comes along, and we go three ways to a flop of jack, six, five, two spades, one heart. Small blind checks it. Now under the gun fires out a bet of 25. I think 50% and lower, we're going to be wanting to uh, raise this up, get some protection and some value for our hand. So I raise up to 75. Small blind now cold calls, and now under the gun comes along as well. So it's looking pretty good so far. We're heading to the turn, it is the nine of hearts. So seven, eight did just get there. Uh, when it checks to me, this is just one of the draws that got there. There's still spade draws, there's still four, three. So I don't think we got to stop betting here. So I fire out two thirds sounds good for $200. Small blind immediately puts in the raise to 500 and it folds back to me. This is just never a bluff. He just has seven, eight here. So we're gonna have to let this one go, unfortunately. The straddle is live, and we raise up the ace-queen offsuit in the hijack to $25. We do get three callers, and we are in position going to a flop of 
Seven, six, four, two spades, one club. The checks to me, I'm just never betting with ace high here, so I'm going to check it back and play some turns. Turn is not great. It's a nine of hearts, so board's getting pretty messy. Small blind checks it. Now under the gun fires out a small bet of just 25. It's only one third. We just can't call here, though. We still have small blind left to act, and our hand is just toast, to be honest. So I'm going to let this one go and move on to the next hand. All right, we've got ace, deuce of diamonds in the big blind. Probably a little bit too weak to squeeze, so I'm just going to flat here. We go to a flop of king, queen, five, rainbow. Check it over. Original Brazer bets $25, so like 40%. Cut off folds, and nothing we can do here. We're just going to have to let this one go. The straddle is live, and the uh, early position Razor has made it 25. I've got pocket fours in the small blind. This should be mostly a fold, but with the big blind under the gun being so passive and only going to be squeezing premiums, we can definitely flat this and go for a set mine. So I call under the gun also calls. We go three ways to a flop of king, 10, three, two spades. This could be a pretty low frequency check raise here, but I check it over under the gun checks it. And now the original razor fires out a pot size bet of 75. Yeah, we're, we're done with this hand. We're done. The straddle is once again live. Uh, middle position, a solid reg is raised up to 30. And we got ace king suited on the button. 3.3x uh, raise in position sounds good. So I make it 100 to go. Folds back around and my opponent makes the call. We're going heads up to a flop of queen, 10, nine, two clubs, one diamond. When he checks it over, this board is a little bit too connected to start using our ace kings as bluffs here. And I don't think we can range bet this. I think it just hits his calling range too hard. So we're going to check this one back, play some turns. Turn is not great. It's the eight of hearts. So any jack now makes it straight. Now my opponent fires out, but it's $80. Uh, we still have two overs, which might not be live. But we do have a gut shot to the nuts, so I am going to call once and play some rivers. River is the four of hearts. My opponent now fires out a very small bet of 150. And there's like no hands that we beat. We beat five, six suited and some suited aces. And that's it. Like <laughs> even his bluffs beat us. So no decision here. We're going to fold this one. And we're not we're not running too hot to start this session. We raise up the ace 10 offsuit under the gun and it falls all the way around. We win seven dollars. All right, we got the first interesting hand. We are now in the game for about 2200, so we're down 700, but still ready to go. Hijack is raised to 15. We got pocket tens in the small blind. This person is a reg, and pocket tens is definitely a three bet. So I make it 60, folds back around. My opponent does make the call. We're going heads up to a flop of king, 10, deuce. There's a set, and it's the best one, too. So we're going to start with a small bet here of $40. King high boards are generally good for the three better. My opponent does make the call. Heading to the turn, it is the six of spades, a huge blank. Now I'm looking at my opponent's stack, and I made a mistake here. I counted his stack to be around 1800, and that's what I use as the effective stack. 1800 is nine SPR, which is about 175-ish percent pot to get in by the river. But I was the effective stack at 1.4K, which is about 145% pot. So I should have bet here around 290 to 300. And I do really like an overbet here with only one flush draw and really one straight draw. If this was a six of hearts, I like a I like an overbet a lot less as pretty much half the deck is going to be really tough to play. But with pocket tens here and really only worried about a few diamonds, I'm going to go for the overbet. I fire up for 350. Once again, a mistake. This should be about 290 because I'm the effective stack, not him. But my opponent makes the call. So we're heading to the river in a $900 pot. River is the beautiful six of hearts. Couldn't ask for a better river. And now looking at stack, see, it would have been really nice if we both had 1350. This would be a nice size river jam, but now we're about one SPR. So my bet didn't need to be that big on the turn. But anyways, we don't have a decision here. We are all in for 1050 and my opponent beats me into the pot. That sounds pretty good. I roll it over and we are winning this $3,000 pot. And now we're up $800. Nice, we've recovered. We have ace 10 again, raise it up to $15, and this time we face a three bet from the cutoff to 45. Pulls back around, I take a look at his stack, and he's only playing 400, so yeah. Into the muck you go. Straddle is live, we pick up pocket threes on the button. Raise things up to $30, I go slightly larger here on the button. My normal size is 25 when the straddle's on, but because we're guaranteed to be in position, we want to play bigger pots in position. Small blind folds, big blind calls, and now under the gun puts in the squeeze to 160. Looks like a good size, however, my opponent is super shallow. Like, we can't really call in set mine here. 
And Big Blind also has a pretty short stack. If we call, he might just ship it in, and now we're having to call off $700 of pocket three. So, yeah, nothing we can do here. We're going to fold and move on to the next hand. Straddle is once again live. I raised the pocket sevens up to $25 in the cutoff. We got a call from the Big Blind as well as the Straddle. We're going three ways to a flop. King, King, 10, Rainbow. Checks to me, and I think it's really close between betting and checking here. Like, really, really, really close. But I'm just going to check this one back. Play some turns. It is the nine of diamonds. Not too great. Big blind now bets up for 25. Folds to me. And, you know, I've got a pair here. So one third sounds reasonable. I call River the six of diamonds. Big blind now fires up once again, but it's only for $25. I could have seven, eight here. Very credible. And his bet is so weak. So I'm going to pounce on this right away. Raise it up to 150. Opponents think for too long and tosses in the call. He is good. He's got the 10-9. Yeah, that one's not going our way. All right, pick up pocket threes in the big blind. Under the gun has limped and now folds around to middle position who raises it up to $60. Cut off calls and it folds around to us. I'm not calling $60. <laughs> I fold. On to the next hand. All right, straddle is live. Button is raised up to $35. Now, if there was a reg in the blinds in either the big blind or the straddle, this would be a mandatory three bet. However, I would like to get some of the uh, blinds to come in here and go for some set blinds. So I toss in the call and straddle also calls. We're going three ways to a flop of king, four deuce, two clubs, one spade. I check it over under the gun checks and now button up fires out a bet of 35. Uh, heads up, we're definitely calling this. In position, we're definitely calling, but with someone left to act behind us, really no way to improve. We've got one good out. We're just going to let this one go and play the next hand. We pick up the 9-8 suit in the cutoff, raise things up to 15, and only the button makes a call. Heads up to a flop of king, three, three, two hearts. We got the flush draw. We're going to start with a very small bet here, around one third of $10. And it gets the job done. Nice. All right, this hand is against the player that we stacked with pocket 10s. He's under the gun, raised up to 15. I'm the low jack with ace-5 suited. This is a very high frequency re-raise, so I make it $50 to go. Cut off now cold calls. This is very common in Dallas. Folds back round and now under the gun puts in the four bet. Up to a whopping $250. 5x. This should be maxed out about 200 here. And for this size, it just doesn't have anything. Like, when you look at these huge sizings from a reg, they just want to get the fold. They've got like ace queen here or something or pocket jacks, something like that. And ace five suit is a pretty nice bluff candidate here. I think cutoff may find the fold. He's only invested $50. And if I shove, it kind of really looks like kings or sometimes some ace king suited. So he may find the fold. But ace five suited, that is in there. I am all in for $1,500. Uh, cutoff thinks about it and then makes a call. <laughs> Damn it. And under the gun, snap fold. So a read was right, but unfortunately, cutoff is not a folding man. We go to a flop of king 10 6, one diamond. Not looking good. The turn is the eight of hearts, river, the four of diamonds. My opponent rolls over two pair. He's got the 10, eight of diamonds. Still happy to get that in ahead with all that $250 overlay, but that one's not going to go our way. All right, folks, it's around 2 p.m. now. I've been playing for about two hours. My stack's sitting around I think 2,600. Uh, managed to pick off that four bet bluff. Oops. It's 250. I don't think he goes 5x with anything that wants to play. So, unfortunately, we got called by the 10 8 suited, but happy to get it in ahead with all that overlay. Uh, playing well today, feeling good. It is a beautiful sunny day. Perfect day to be indoors playing poker. I actually wish I was at the pool right now, but let's get back to it. Get him some more hands, win some more money. This next hand, the under the gun player has limped. Cutoff has raised up to $30 over the limp, and I've got ace deuce of diamonds in the big line. I generally don't like three betting ace deuce and I'd rather use hands like ace three, ace four, ace five with ace five being the highest frequency. Uh, don't just fire off all your suited wheel aces because then you're not going to leave yourself space to have six, seven suited, five, six, maybe some like 10, eight suited kind of hands. And then also some weird ones like king six. But anyways, ace deuce is just a clear call here and under the gun comes along with the ride as well. Hence to a flop of queen seven, six, two diamonds, pretty wet connected flop. And we do have the nut flush draw. But I'm going to check this one over, under the gun checks, and cut off fires out a bet of $50. About 60% here. I think that we do want to find some raises, and the suited wheel aces are the best for this. 
I don't block any of my opponent's continues. If he had King Jack of Diamonds, Jack 10 of Diamonds, all those hands, we get a ton of value from, and we get absolutely cooler when that flush card comes in. Having the deuce three, four, five of diamonds doesn't really um, interact with those ranges. On this board, it kind of does because he can definitely have like five, four suited. But ace, deuce, clear, clear raise here. So I make it 150 under the gun folds and cutoff makes the call. And to the turn, it is the 10 of spades. Now I look over my stack. If you're in the three SPR range, you do not want to be using your high equity bluffs here. Right, if you've got the nut flush draw, if you've got the straight draw to the nuts, you are not wanting to barrel them off here because what happens when your opponent just decides, I'm just going to go with this hand and ship it in? Kind of sucks, right? You got to fold out your flush draw. So you want to use hands here, like maybe I raised, I don't know, I'm trying to look at some gut shots that I might have. But 4 3 suited, I would definitely fire that because getting jammed on, who gives a shit? Um, maybe some bottom pairs that I raised as well. Stuff like that, just like really garbagey stuff that doesn't have too much chance to improve. And they're gonna keep firing with most of your strongest hands. And then for the ones that are gonna check this, check here, you're gonna put your kind of like two pairs, your really vulnerable stuff that is gonna have trouble playing across a lot of rivers. So anyways, I'm gonna check this over. My opponent now fires out a bet of 250. And we are definitely gonna to wanna to have some check raises in here. Ace, deuce of diamonds is a perfect one to use. And we're gonna balance that with hands like seven, six suited, queen, 10 suited, which is definitely a raise on this flop. And those hands just like to get it in here, right? There's like 30 cards that we hate seeing on the river that are gonna make it really tough to play out of position. So, I'm going to have some nut flushes here. I'm going to have some 8-9 as well. And my sets would just keep betting on the flop, or on the turn. But 8-9 is super vulnerable. So is bottom 2. So is queen 10, really. So anyways, I'm going to raise it up here. But I don't want to use an all-in sizing versus this player. As I just think he's going to put me on a draw every time. So I'm going to raise to an amount that's essentially all-in here. And I raise it up to $800. My opponent's not loving it. He's thinking it over. And then he gets called for another game, and he says, you know what, I'm just going to fold this because I'm going to the other game. And he makes the fold. Ace-Queen doesn't show, but he had Ace-Queen that he tabled. Nice to get that one through. Looking down at two limps, we've got Ace-King offsuit on the button. I generally go about 4x plus 1 per limper, just because my uh, ice swing range is a lot tighter than my raise first in range, because limpers just don't fold. So $30 to go, and <laughs> they prove me wrong. Everyone folds. Damn it. We have pocket twos here under the gun in a very tough game. This is not an open. You're just going to get three bet way too much. But in a game where people are only three betting jacks plus and maybe ace king, easiest open ever. I raise up to 15. We go five ways to the flop of queen, seven, six, two diamonds. Really similar flop. Checks to me. I'm not betting this four ways. So I check it. Checks through. Turn is another six. Small blind now fires up for $60 pot size bet. Let's just get rid of this hand. All right, I've come back from the washroom, had to post $5. That's why I've got ace-8 offsuit here in the cutoff. Just going to check this over, and small blind now raises up to 15. I make the call, and we go heads up to a flop in position of ace-jack-10. For whatever reason, I didn't think I was in position. I thought I was first to act, and I check it over. <laughs> and then my opponent bets 15. I make the call, we go to the turn. It is the eight of clubs. Pretty good card, and I once again check it over, and no one tells me anything. <laughs> I'm just realizing this now as I watch the footage back, uh, but he now fires up for 30. We make the call. We go to the river. It is the six of spades. I once again check it out of position. My opponent checks it back, back, and then I table my hand. Um, I didn't even notice that until about five seconds ago when I looked back at the recording and I wondered why I didn't bet this on the river, but because I'm an idiot. <laughs> We got ace queen off suit again. Raise up to 15. Cutoff is now three bet us to 50. Falls back round and he's a little bit too short to go for the four bet. So I'm just going to call here and play some flops. Flop comes down 10 highs, 10, 6, 5 rainbow. I check it over. Opponent fires at a pot size bet of 100. He's probably just got jacks here. Or maybe even like ace king, but we just don't beat anything. And these players just aren't three betting too, too wide. So into the muck you go. I think he did have pocket jacks. I think he showed me this one. 
Pick it up 10-3 suited on the button. I think this is a pretty close raise, but it's a time rate game, so I'm going to throw it up to 15. Big blind makes a call. We head to a flop of king 9-6, two diamonds, one spade. Checks it over to me. Uh, if you do want to bet on this board, it's going to have to be a big bet. But we do have quite a few back doors, so I'm going to fire out a near pot size bet of 25. My opponent immediately raises that to 100. This is just pure strength. Like, worst hand he's going to have here is 7-8 of diamonds, so it's nothing much we can do here. Just going to let this one go. All right, I don't think I'm going to raise up to 20. Middle position is called, and I've got ace-4 of diamonds in the hijack. This is probably about 50-50 if you want to squeeze it. This time landed on call, so we're going five ways to a flop. Let's see some diamonds out there. It comes down 10-9-6, two hearts, one diamond. Not a whole lot going on. Under the gun fires up about 40%. Uh, yeah, we're just going to fold. We've got too many players behind us, so on to the next hand. All right, the straddle is live. There's a limper, and the low jack has raised it up to $50. He's got less than 100 big blinds, so ace-4 suited is not going to be a re-raise here, but I'm happy to take ace-4 suited multi-way. I make the call, and we go pretty multi-way to the flop. We're going four ways here. Five ways, sorry. Comes down all right. It's eight, six, three, two hearts. We do the nut flush draw, some back doors, and an over. Checks the original razor, who now fires out a half pot bet of 125. So this man always has an over pair here. And I kind of want to force out the rest of the uh, table. And also, this is just pre preserve our equity. If we call here on the turn, the pot's going to be about 500. And he's just going to ship his $700 in on the turn. But I don't mind getting in versus an overpair, because against any overpair that isn't pocket aces, uh, we're about 48, I think it was, 48%, 50 with our backdoor straight draws, our overcard, and our nut flush draw. So, pretty happy to get this in here. And maybe, maybe he'll fold an overpair. Who knows? It is a five-way flop. It's pretty dangerous. I can have 8-6 suited. I can have a lot of sets. So, I raise up to 325. Folds back around. He doesn't give a shit. All in. I call. We're off to the races. The turn is the 10 of spades. River. Ace of diamonds. Looking good. However, my opponent rolls over the pocket 10. So... We're not going to win that flip, unfortunately. Low jack has limped, and we definitely want to play some uh, pots with this guy. So we're going to raise up the king's seven of hearts, trying to ISO him in the cutoff. Make it 25. A very old gentleman to my left makes a call, and so does a limper. So we're going three ways to a flop of ace, jack, jack with a heart. He checks it over, and support is going to miss them a lot. So I'm going to fire a very small bet here to try and take it down. So $20 in the middle. Very old fella to my left calls, and low jack folds. If we pick up equity, we're going to keep barreling, so that's the plan. The turn is a seven of spades. We do pick up equity. Now, I know my opponent doesn't have a jack, because when I bet 20, he would have raised to at least 400 with a jack. <laughs> no, he would have raised really, he would have raised right away. So, my opponent has an ace here, and he can definitely fold some aces. He, he will fold an ace. So, I fire up for 75, and it does get the job done, so... Happy with that one. All right, we got King-9 suited under the gun. Raises one up to $15. And now Lojack throws in a 3-bet up to 45 It's a little smaller than what he normally does. So when it gets back to me, I think using our worst opening King-X here to turn into a 4-bet. I think we also have King-5 or King-6 suited. I can't remember my pre-flop charts right now, but we'll use that one as well. So I'm going to go for the 4-bet. He's a little bit short, so I don't want to go full 3x. So I make it a little bit smaller, down to 120. My opponent already doesn't love it, but does make the call. So we're going heads up to a flop. King 4, deuce, 2 spades, 1 heart. Pretty good flop. Uh, out of, in position, I would C-bet this 100%, be a range bet. But out of position with two low cards there uh, and the flush draw out there, I think we want to start working in some checks. Our, one of our weakest kings is definitely going to make it in there. So I check it over. The opponent does check behind. We're heading to the turn. It is the six of hearts. Introduce another flush draw. I think we want to start getting some value here. I think I like a really small bet here, actually. I think I went for 65%, but I think one third makes a lot more sense. But I fire up for 185. My opponent does find the fold. I think he had pocket tens here. We have the eight six suit in the low jack. Raise things up to 15. Hijack calls, cutoff calls, and now button puts in a raise up to $50. Yeah, right. What kind of piece of shit hand is this? <laughs> Small blind, a really good solid reg. Now cold calls the 50, which is surprising. And all that dead money in there. I'm not just going to flat this. I think button is super weak here. 
He's got about $800. We're going to go about a quarter of his stack here. So I four bet up to $200. Not something I'd recommend, but when you have a good read. You just got to go with it. Hijack folds, cutoff folds, button snap calls. And small blind also cold calls again, which is very surprising for a reg. But we're going three ways to a flop. It is seven, four, deuce, one spade. Checks to me. Uh, three ways I really want to size down here. I think I sized down a little bit too much. I would have liked about 150. But I did bet for about 100. We've got some really nice back doors we can go on. I think I bet the small because Button's only got one SPR. And if he's got like a hand like pocket eights, he's just going to rip it in. So we lose a little bit less here. But Button makes a call. And small line also makes a call. So I'm a little bit worried that small blind has sevens here. Because I just don't see him calling tens or nines here. It just seems weird. But we're going to go to the turn. On a spade, we're probably just going to have to bet pretty big. But the turn is the three of diamonds. We only pick up a gut shot. And then ace five suited also does get there. But I don't see any of them having that really. Small line checks it. I'm just going to check this one back. And button checks it as well. So maybe we can hit a five. River is the ten of spades. Another big brick. And I just don't think anyone has anything. Especially when small blind checks it once again. I He just really likes to kind of stab with his value. And I don't think he'd be going for a check raise here. So... I don't think anyone is particularly strong here. I have no idea what Button's got. Small line's probably got a pocket pair. But I'm just going to go... You know, if I had an over pair, this is how I'd play it. If I had aces, kings, queens. So I'm going to fire out. Two-thirds sounds good. $600. Button doesn't think for long. Makes the call. And small blind folds. Eight high is not going to do it. My opponent had the ace five offsuit. Knew he was weak. I knew it. Ah... Uh... Oh well. Lojack has raised up to 20. I've got 10 9 suited in the cutoff. I would probably lean more towards 3 betting a hand like 10 8 suited, but 10 9 just plays too well in position. So I'm going to make the call. We get two more callers. So we are going four ways to this flop of King 6 3, one club. Big blind checks. Original Razor fires out for $50. And versus this sizing into three players, we're just not going to float here with our back doors. So I toss it in the muck. All right, the solid reg is raised up to 20. I've got jack three suited in the big blind. I think facing 4x, this should just go straight into the muck, but... Yeah. Yeah, I think 3x, you can defend this, but 4x is just excessive, so... Anyways, I make the call. We're going to a flop of 10, 9, 4, 1 club, 2 hearts. Our stack's not doing too well, by the way. I check it over. My opponent does check behind. We're probably going to go for a check raise there. Turn is the ace of diamonds. I check it over. My opponent once again checks it behind, which is a little bit strange. River is the queen of spades. Check it over once again. My opponent fires out a bet of 15. And, you know, either he's got a queen here or he's just, you know, got one of those like really gross no equity bluffs that you just couldn't find a way to bluff it and now has to bluff River. So I think Jack High is an all right call blocking Queen Jack. He probably bets on the flop. I don't know. It's a good price. I think he can have some very low cards that are just going to miss completely. So I toss in the call. He's got the King 10. So, waste of $15 there. Alright, guys, stepping out again. It's 4 p.m. now. So, we've been at it for four hours. We're in the game now for 2200. Sitting with a stack of 15s. So we're down seven. Not running great, as you guys can see. Uh, making the right reads, you know. I knew the guy was light when he four bet up to $250. Picked that one off, but we ran into 10 8 suited, unfortunately. And then I knew that $50 squeeze was just very light. Did not expect him to call with ace 5 offsuit. Trapping the turn makes sense, though. So just unfortunate. But I'm gonna get back in there. We've got six to eight more hours. We'll see how I'm feeling at 10 p.m. And hopefully, we can recoup our losses and book a 5k win. Okay, Under the Gun has made it 20. He is a very loose player, so Ace-Queen off is definitely going to be a mandatory 3-bet. I make it 65. Big Blind now cold calls. This is very common here in Dallas. And Under the Gun calls as well. So we're three ways to a flop of Queen-6-5, two diamonds, one heart. Pretty good. They check it over to me, and one-third sounds good multi-way. So I fire off for 65. Big Blind calls and Under the Gun folds. Heading to the turn, it is the Ace of Spades. We make top two. Big Blind checks it over. And we're looking about two SPR, so 60% here looks good. So I fire a bet of 225. Opponent once again makes a call. 
We're going to the river. It is the 10 of diamonds. The front door flush did get in. Opponent checks it over. You got to go for thin value here, right? He could have the flush, like for sure, but we just beat so much. So I go all in. Opponent's in the for too long. Tosses in the call. And we managed to cooler ace king. So we are. I think this brings us back to even this hand. Yeah, it's 2300 in a stack. Nice. All right, pocket queens. We raise things up to $15 and we get two callers. Then it goes to the big blind who now puts in the squeeze up to a whopping $150. This is a bluff. This is nothing. How can we get the most amount of money in here? I look over to stack. He's got about 1200 starting. So. I want to put in about 25% of his stack, so I'm going to go ahead with the 4-bet up to 325, see if we can squeeze out a call. Hijack folds, cut off folds. Unfortunately, my opponent just tosses his cards in the muck. Yeah, we are picking off all the bluffs pre-flop, just by looking at their bet sizing. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but... Yeah. Fortunately, we didn't get any action to this hand. Under the gun is raised it up to $20, middle position, a button, and small blind have made the call, and I'm going to defend with the ace-10 offsuit. We head to a flop of ace-8-7-2 diamonds, one heart. I'm going to check it over here, and actually checks all the way through. End to the turn, it is the five of spades, so 6-9-6-4 six, six, do get there. And small line now leads out for 50. A little bit dicey already with three players behind us, but... You know, top pair, okay kicker, I'm going to toss in the call. Under the gun also calls, middle position also calls, and now Button throws in a raise to 225. Small blind falls back on us, and versus this player, he's the one that we just uh, had the pocket queens with. I would just rip it in against him. He doesn't have anything here, but the players to my left are a little bit trappy, so I'm quite worried, and one of them's I'm quite deep with, so I'm just going to fold this. It kind of sucks. Uh, the rest of the hand, I can't remember how it played out, but one of the players behind us actually did trap with 6-4 of diamonds and managed to stack him. Ooh, we got pocket queens again. Raise things up to $15, and only the big blind defends. So we're going heads up to a flop of ace-king-deuce with a flush draw. Checks to me, and this is not a range bet flop. This is an over bet flop. You're wanting to bet 133 here. Pocket queens is way too merged to do that. You'd be using hands like pocket threes, fours, fives, sixes. And then all your gut shots and as well as some flush draws. You can just go wild here because big blind is just so weak here. But pocket queens, we're just going to check this one back. Turn is the 10 of hearts. We do pick up a gut shot. Big blind now checks it over again. Still too weak to go over value. So I'm going to check it back one more time. River is the jack of diamonds. So we make the nuts. Big blind checks it. I'm going to try and squeeze out a little bit of value. I throw in a bet of 20. Fortunately, my opponent folds. All right, under the gun is raised up to 20. We defend the queen nine of hearts in the big blind. We go heads up to a flop of seven, four, three, two hearts. Uh, big blind versus under the gun. This should be a lead with this hand. This should be a, a lead out of $15, but I checked way too quick. And under the gun checks behind. I would have checked raise if he bet. Turn is the king of spades. A card is much better for my opponent, especially since he checked the flop. So I'm just going to check this one behind and probably not go for the check raise now. Just check call. And my opponent once again checks it back. River... 10 of diamonds. Um, we still beat some hands, and this is a bit too strong to bluff, so I'm going to check it over. My opponent checks behind, and he's got the queen on of diamonds. Chop it up. Picking up pocket sixes in the hijack, I raise things up to 15. Cut off and button make the call, and now small blind puts in the squeeze to so 100. Big blind folds, and knowing Dallas, if I call this, cut off and button are most likely going to come along as well, so we have a pretty good odds to set mine here. I toss in the call, cut off folds, and button makes a call. So we're going three ways to a flop of 6-4-3 rainbow. Beautiful. Even better news, small blind now shoves in $300, a pot size bet. He's just never folding, so we are going to get it in here. I re-raise all in. And now button's in the tank. And button has probably $1,500 to two k here. He's thinking it over. We get a call? Unfortunately, he does decide to fold his pocket sevens. Probably should have taken that into effect when I just jammed here and maybe just flatted to allow button in, but I just didn't think he had much. But small line obviously calls. We table our hand. He hates it. Turn is a ten of spades. River, jack of diamonds, and we scoop this pot. Button is raised up to fifteen. I look down. I got pocket aces. I make it sixty, and it folds brown. How can I four bet eight six suited 
and ship $1,500 in the middle of Ace-5 suited and not get action. Outrageous. Picking up one of my favorite hands, 7-6 suited, raise it up to $15, only the cutoff makes a cost. We're going heads up to a flop, which is quite nice. It's Queen Jack, 10, two diamonds, one heart. Obviously, we don't have much here, but our overall range is really strong on this board. I'm the only one that can have the nuts in so many ways. Ace, king, you know, queens, jacks, tens. So I'm going to fire a very small bet of $10. My opponent does come along. Turn is the four of diamonds, introducing the flush. Just going to check this over. This hand's a little bit too weak. And my opponent checks behind. River, five of hearts doesn't change much. We do river and open ender, though, so I'm going to blast off here. It just seems like my opponent doesn't have a whole lot, so... I'm going to fire a bet, and it's going to be pretty big. I think $75. I think this is around pot and a half without the blinds, because I keep forgetting to add the blinds. But $75, my opponent folds. Yay, pick up a small pot there. Okay, middle position has limped. I raise the king-queen offsuit up to $25. Cutoff calls, and now button squeezes up to $125. 5x, it's quite large. Probably gonna fold and then middle position makes her decision super easy by limp re raising up to 350. Dirty, dirty limp re raiser. Uh, yeah, we fold. Next hand. All right, we got a middle position limp to five. Cut off his raise up to 20. We got pocket aces. Can we get some action this time? Re raise it up to 80. Indeed, we can. Cut off does make the call. We're going heads up to a flop of 964 rainbow. Out of position, Anything that's below a 10, like any kind of like 10 high flops or lower, you're generally going to want to do a ton of checking. This is no different. So I check it over. My opponent fires out a bet of $50. First of this size, we definitely want to have some raises. We can use a ton of our like king queen with backdoor flush draws, as well as like queen jacks, etc. Aces, going to make it in there. I re raise up to 225, 4.5x facing a th uh, one third pot bet. It's around my standard size. My opponent does make the call. So we're heading to the turn. It is the Queen of Diamonds. A card I'm going to be barreling a lot on when I turn diamonds, so pocket aces is no different. We're looking at 1.5 SPR. So around 50-ish percent pot is what I should have bet here. I think I went too big here and fired out a bet of 400. A little bit too big. This is two-thirds. My opponent thinks it over and then folds some sort of 9x, he said. So we're not going to get paid that one. Okay, raise an ace jack off suit, and only the big blind comes along. So, heads up to a flop of 7 4 3 rainbow. Checks to me, just gonna check this one back. Our hand's a bit too strong to bluff. Turn is the queen of diamonds. Big blind checks it over, and it's nice to have a jack here. It matches our value as well as an ace. Right, we're gonna have ace queen queen jack, so I'm gonna fire out here for 20. My opponent makes the call. River is the 10 of hearts. Uh, big blind now checks it over, and now we've just got so much value. Right, my ace tens here, my jack tens, a lot of those hands, all my 10x is going to go for value. So, yeah, I think ace jack's going to make it in there, but I just remember thinking in game, this lady's not folding anything. I could bet 250 and she's not going to fold. So, I really don't like my bet here, even though I think it does make sense. But I fire out for 70 and she calls me the old seven deuce. Yeah, uh, this is like my first real. And that I was like, uh, I didn't play that one well. I just knew she wasn't folding and I still went for it. All right, folks, it is hour six now. We are halfway through the session. Uh, music might be expensive. Things are going well for us. We've got a stack of 3,600, so we're up 1,300 now. A little bit lower than the $500 hourly that I'm used to, but <laughs> kidding. Uh, yeah, things are going well. And I'm looking forward to spending my entire weekend editing this video because we're currently at something like 50 hands. It's going to be fun, but time to get back to it. Four to six hours to go. We'll see how my back feels. Okay, under the gun is limped. I've got ace three suited on the button. Raised it up to $25 and he calls. Heads up to a flop of queen ten five, two spades. We pick up the flush draw. The opponent checks it over and I'm going to bet here. $15. I think this is too small. I think I should have sized up here, but my opponent does make the call. Hence the turn, it is the four of spades, we make the flush, and my opponent snap bets pot for $75. I look over to stack, it looks like he's got around just under 300, so a little more than a pot size bet for going to the river, so I think trapping here is totally fine. So I make the call, we're off to the river, it is a board pairing five, now my opponent checks it over. I don't know what to think of this. So lead out for pot on the turn when the flush completes, and then check this. 
But we've only got about a pot size bet behind. Maybe he's still got a flush. So I'm going to go all in here for 285. My opponent laughs and folds. Uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe he had top pair. I don't know. This is a double board bomb pot. So we get to the flop. We are nine handed and we get a board of king, eight, nine, two hearts on the top board with queen, seven, six, two diamonds on the bottom. Under the gun plus two now leads out for full pot. He has top set on the bottom with a third not flush draw and bottom pair on the top board. Low jack now calls and we look down at king, seven, ten, six. So we have bottom two on the bottom board and we have top pair plus wrap plus second nut flush draw on the top board. Very, very, very strong hand. I'm going to raise this up right away. Uh, most players, they usually only play one board when they pot it. So us being able to play both boards, we could potentially cooler uh, quite a few hands here. So I repop it up to 675. Cutoff now looks down at his hand. He has the nut flush draw on the top board and a gut shot on the bottom. And he cold calls this 675. Pulls back rounds under the gun plus two who decides. Let's ship it in there for $1,135. Low jack gets out the way. I reshove for $3,985. And cut off finds the call. So we're going three ways to this flop. Let's see what happens. The turn on the top board is the king of clubs improving us to trips. And on the bottom board, it's a nine of diamonds giving us a gut shot, which is going to be relatively weak. But no one has diamonds, so our gut shot is live to the 8 with the 10-7. River is the ace of clubs on the top, so we still have trips here. And on the bottom board, it is the three of hearts changing nothing. We are going to scoop cut off for his entire stack. And under the gun plus two, we are going to get halved. So I think we win around $2,000 this hand. And now I'm only down about $1,000 in these double board bomb pots here in Dallas. Pretty good. That was an amazing situation to be in here. I pick up the queen, nine of diamonds under the gun, raise things up to 15, small blind calls, and now big blind puts in the squeeze up to 80. Uh, we're a little bit deep, so I don't mind calling this, but if I'm calling this, I'm just calling everything. This is my worst queen X that I open. It is a reasonable size, but uh, I have to fold sometimes, so I'm just going to toss into the muck. All right, hijack is raised with 20. We've got king, queen suited next to act. We re-raised up to 65. We get a cold collar from the button. Pulls back around to hijack, who wastes no time at all in four betting us to 315. That is way too big. We obviously can't continue with anything that isn't aces here. So in the muck you go, king, queen suited. All right, low jack is raised with 20. It's a solid reg. Button is called. I've got 9-8 suit in the small blind. I don't really like squeezing this hand. It's a super low frequency squeeze. And this should probably just be folded, to be honest. But I make the call. Big blind folds. Go into a flop of ace, 10, 9, all clubs. I check it over. Low jack fires up for 20. Button folds. And you may think this is a call, but it's really not. I think low jack knows that this is a very low frequency bet flop. Ace high monotone. It's not really that great for the imposition player. Like, we're going to have a lot more flushes than he is. So, yeah, out of position. Even though it's a small bet, I think we're just going to toss this one in the muck. There's just too many bad turns and rivers. And there's no way we're going to win the pot. So, pretty tight fold here. All right, low jack has limped. We are going to iso him the queen eight suited on the button. Raise up to 25, small blind calls, and low jack calls as well. Going three ways to a flop of 10, 4, 4, rainbow. Not even a backdoor flush draw for us. But when they check it both over, this is a flop that's going to miss them a lot. And I think we get a really cheap price on a bluff here. So fire up for 25. And it gets the job done. Nice. All right. Ace, 10 of diamonds. Raise up to 15. Person to my left, three bets to 50. Pulls back round. And he's a little bit short. So I don't really want to go for the four bet here to 200. Or 150, rather as we're probably just going to get jammed on. I think Fold is the best play here, but it's a decent price. We do have Ace-10 suited, so I'm going to toss in the call. Go into a flop of King-10-4 Rainbow. I check it over. My opponent C-bets for half pot. Got a call here, but not loving it. Hence the turn. It is the Jack of Hearts. Board's getting really connected here. I check it over, and he fires up for 125. There's just no way we're good here. I, I could turn my hand to a bluff, but he's just too short. I think he's calling, so yeah, we Fold. Straddle is live. We pick up pocket jacks, raise it up to $25. Folds round, small blind makes the call, and we're going heads up to a flop of 
Ace King 9 2 clubs. This is a fun fact, actually. This is, I think, the highest frequency of over bets from in position. Small blind checks it over. I think it's a bit different because he's in the small blind, so we can have some pocket nines here, maybe. But if he was big blind versus like button, this is the highest frequency over bet. But with jacks, because it's an over bet board, it's going to be locked away in our check back range, unfortunately. Turn, 10 of hearts doesn't change much. We do pick up a gut shot. Now leads out for pretty much pot. Uh, versus player, we're just going to fold this. We're not going to be good here. So into the muck you go. All right, it's folded around to small blind who is raised up to 20. Ace jack off, I think mostly one of three bets, but sometimes also call. So this time I do toss in the call. We're going heads up to a flop of king, nine, seven, two diamonds. Small blind checks it over. And I think betting here is just a little bit too thin, blind versus blind. So I'm going to check it back. Turn is the nine of diamonds. We pick the flush draw. Opponent checks it over once again. We're just going to check this one back. River is the four of diamonds. We do make the flush. My opponent once again checks it over. And in these smaller pots, I almost always like to use over bet sizings on the river. And we can definitely go to some thin value here. So I fire up for 50. And unfortunately, my opponent folds. Under the gun has raised up to 20. We have ace, nine of diamonds on the button. A little bit too weak to three bet and under the gun raise. So I'm just going to call... Nice suited ace, and we're guaranteed position. Big blind also comes along. We go to a really nice flop of ace, 10, 9, 2 hearts, 1 diamond. We've got top and bottom pair, as well as a backdoor flush draw. Surprisingly, it gets checked over to me, so I'm going to do my own betting. One third is my preferred size on flops multi-way. So 20 bucks to go. Big blind now raises it up to 60. Under the gun folds, and already loving this. But I don't want to 3-bet the flop. Top and bottom pair usually play a lot more passively, and top 2 and bottom 2 really just go for it. So I think we're just going to call in position, keep his range wide, and play some turns. So $60, turn is, what is the worst turn in the deck? Yeah, it's that one, the 10 of hearts. Probably going to fold to a bet now, but my opponent checks it over. So have to check this one back and play some rivers. Rivers even worse, it's the queen of hearts. So four to flush gets there. My opponent now fires up for 100. Very reasonable to fold here. We are never calling here. But there's a third option that I like even better. I look over to stack, he's got around seven or 800 over there. And originally I thought I only want to use trips to bluff here. Otherwise I'm just going to be so overdoing it. But then I don't have trips because the only ones I would have would be 10 X of hearts. And that's impossible to have. I would never bet the flop with a 10. It'd be very low frequency play. And if I got raised, I would just fold. So I never have trips here. And Ace-9 specifically is the best removal to Ace-10, as well as 10-9 and Pocket-9. So we just have the nut removal here. So with this hand, we are going to have to go for it. I raise all in here. $720 to go. Big ol' over bet. Put my opponent in a spot. And he thinks it over. It looks like he wanted a snap call. Lynn rolls over the Ace-Queen and makes the fold. So we are going to get that one through. All right, four or three suit in the hijack. I think it's a pretty close open in a time rate game, but I open it up. Cut off button and small line make the call. Now big line puts in the squeeze to $50. <laughs> it is so tiny. And last time that I saw someone do this, I knew they had nothing. But this big blind player is about 40 years older than that player. So he has got himself a hand. It's kind of annoying that we can't fold here because the price is just way too good. And four or three suited plays very poorly multi-way, but... Not much we can do here. We toss in the call, and we are going five ways to this flop of nine, five, deuce, two clubs. Small blind checks. No big blind checks, which is really interesting. Um, he's got about 700 behind, so I'm just assuming he's going for the check raise all in here, so I'm not going to take the bait and bet here. So I'm going to check this over, cut off checks, and now button fires out for 100. Small blind calls. Now big blind calls, so now he's not check raising all in. Um, but I don't want to raise here. It's going to be just a disaster if we get it in versus clubs. And the more people we have in, if we do hit the miracle ace or six, the better. And this is a great price. So I'm going to toss in the call and cut off folds. Going to the turn, it is the jack of clubs. I'm pretty done with the hand. And it does check to me. Just going to check this one over. And button checks behind. We're going to the river. It is the king of diamonds. So we have nothing here, but... It checks to me. I'm not going to go for it this time. I check it back. Button fires out for 350. The original Razor goes all in. And Button snaps him off. 
uh, Bun had pocket fives, and the original Razor had queens. No club. Queens, no club. I don't know why he reshoved, but... Yeah, that could have been a big pot for us, but it wasn't meant to be. Alright folks, we are at hour 8 now. My stack is up to a whopping $6,000. We are up about 3800 after 8 hours, so keeping on par with that $500 hourly here in Dallas. This is just stupid at this point, it's like 50 hours at 500 an hour. Mental, uh, but it's 8 p.m. It's been eight hours and I am hungry and I don't want to eat food. That salad kind of sucked. So, I'm gonna drive down the road, take a little break, and get some sushi over at Little Katana. Show you guys some sushi and then we're gonna get right back into some hands and hopefully break my new record. Uh, right now we're up 3,800. My previous best at 2.5 was 39, so not a long way to go. I think we can do it. Alright folks, I am all sushied up, ready for my chamomile tea, and let's get back into some hands. Ace 10 off suit again, raise up to 15, and we face another 3 bet, we have Ace 10 off. I uh, randomized 10% 4 bets and landed on fold, so into the muck you go. The under the gun straddle is live, and I raised the 10 9 of spades up to $25. I get 2 callers, so we're going 3 ways to this flop of Ace 8 7 2 spades, pretty good situation here. Uh, definitely going to start betting here. Always one third multi ways, so $25 to go. And they both make the call. We improve on the turn in both ways with a six of spades. We make the flush as well as the open ender. Going to keep firing here. They both look like they have around $600 behind. I can't go too, too big. We're still multi way, so $100 out in the middle. And they both fold, fortunately. All right, straddles live. We have a hijack race of 25, got ace five of diamonds. Very high frequency re race, so I make it 80 to go. Straddler now cold calls, very common in Dallas, and the original Razor folds. Heads up to a flop of Jack, Nine, Deuce, Two, Spades. He checks it over, I don't think it's a range bet flop. We don't have a whole lot going on, so I'm just gonna check this one back. This board just smashes a cold caller's range, so. Heads of the turn, it is the Queen of Diamonds. Oh no, fires out for 100. Not much we can do here. He's probably just got it, so I fold. One or two orbits later in the exact same position, we pick up 5-4 of spades, same players raise up to 25, if you want to play this hand it's got to be a 3 bet, so randomize about 50-50 here and land it on raise. $80 to go, once again the straddler cold calls the 80, and now hijack puts in a 4 bet to 225, it's quite small, we're very deep, 5 betting here is just out of the question, but I, I think it's a bit too small and it's still going to get under the gun to call, I think this should be more around like the $300 range. But with 5-4 suited, not much we can do. We're going to have to call and play multi-way here, but we are in position. And on the gun also makes a call. So we're going three ways to a flop of Ace, Queen, Deuce, Rainbow. Pretty good board for 5-4 suited. Uh, under the gun now checks, and now Hijack checks it over. So we could have Aces here, or Queens, or Kings. Uh, not a lot of hands make sense to check here, and I think even three ways he does want to put in a small bet here, but... With 5 high, we're going to have to start bluffing here. We have some really good back doors, and we do have a gut shot to the nuts. So I fire up for 150, and now the cold caller raises it up to $500. Hijack tanks, and eventually folds. And man, this is nothing. This player has absolutely dog shit garbage cards right now. And I really want to ship it on him, but he's got, he's got like five or 600 behind. And even with garbage, he's just going to call it off. Right, if he's got a gut shot here like Jack Ten, he's just gonna go with it. If he's got pocket sixes, he's just gonna go with it. You know, Queen Jack, he's just gonna put the money in. So nothing we can do here, unfortunately. I fold, and what do you know? He shows a Jack Nine of Diamonds. <laughs> That's insane. It's a four bet pot, three ways, Ace Queen High, and no one has a pair. Oh, uh, I mean, he read the situation right and made a play. Really nice. Really nice. Uh, <laughs> we pick up a six of diamonds under the gun, raise it up to 15, and we go super multi-way to the flop. We are going five ways here too. King, nine, three, rainbow. We do have a backdoor flush draw, but five ways I'm not betting this, so I check it over. And action checks all the way through. Turn is the nine of spades. 
Gonna give up here, I keep checking it. And now the same player from last time, the Jack-9 suited, bets out for $45. Folds back to me, and usually I just toss this in the muck. He's got the exact same tells uh, from the last time with the Jack-9 suited when he was bluffing. As well, he would never check back a king or a nine here. So, like, what do you even have here? The answer is nothing. So I toss in the call. I'm just getting some really big, weak vibes from him. Low jack folds, and we're probably going to call almost all blank rivers. River is the seven of hearts. Didn't really want to see that one. But anyways, I check it over. Hunt checks behind, and he, I roll it over, and he shows the four or three off. All right, so he was weak, but I guess... He can still have a pair <laughs> Bit of a stupid call by me. There goes $45. We have ace jack offsuit on the button, raise things up to 15. Small mind puts in the raise to 55, folds back to me and should probably just fold this, but it's a reasonable price. We're in position and it is button versus small blind. So I toss in the call. We go to a flop of 774 rainbow. One fires out for 50. I just can't float here. So into the muck it goes. Low Jack has raised up to 15, and we have Ace King offsuit in the cutoff. I re raise up to $50, folds back, my opponent makes a call. Everyone heads up to a flop. It's really nice. It's King 9 3, two hearts, one diamond. My opponent checks it over. I'm going to fire a one third bet of 35 here. And then he check raises up to 110. Already not loving this, but we have Ace King here, so I toss in the call. Head to the turn. It is the 9 of clubs, a really good card. Reduces combos of King 9 suited. And pocket nine, so overall, really nice card. Now, my opponent keeps firing for 250, and alarm bells are going off because I just like what do we beat here? Nothing for value. We lose to quads, we lose to pocket threes. He somehow has king nine suited, we lose to that too. And if he was bluffing on the flop, I think he just gives up on this turn. You know, he could just be running into a boat every time he's bluffing, and all my instincts were telling me to fold here. But I just got lost here and thought that a 9 removed so much as value that I just had to call. But I knew this should have been a fold. And I was 8 hours in just playing automatically and I tossed in the call because the 9 removes so much value. Who hits the river? It is the queen of clubs. Opponent fires at a pot size bet of 830. Leave himself like 1 or 200 behind. And once again, this should just be a fold. Is my opponent raising 8-7 of hearts on the flop? No. Is he going to raise Queen Jack of Hearts on the flop? Maybe, but is he going to go ballistic with it on the turn and river? No. Jack 10 did get there. So, I don't know. I was just in the thought process of I like the 9 being so good, removing so much of his value. And it did really feel like pocket 3s. But I did toss in the call. Not happy with that. And my opponent rolls over the King 9 suited. Like, there's a $1,000 there that I lost that I just didn't need to. That was just really silly. And so after this, I decided I wasn't going to play anymore. I was going to rack up because I just wasn't thinking clearly. The turn is a mandatory fold. Especially the Ace of Hearts. It's just, yeah, I couldn't find the fold, unfortunately. All right, under the gun is raised up to 15, and we three bet the pocket jacks up to 50. Folds back around, and my opponent does make the call. Going heads up to a flop of 6-4 deuce, two spades, one diamond. He checks it over, and... We definitely have the best hands, we do want to bet, but I think this is a big bet size flop. I'm not too sure, but I just decide on one third because I'm not really going to get punished for a one third bet. So $30 to go and my opponent makes the call. We're off to the turn, it is the king of diamonds. My opponent checks it over. And I thought about checking this back, but I think queens are a better check back. But I think jacks want to go for some value here. As well as get a little bit more protection from a hand like ace queen with ace queen of spades or something like that. And I just don't think he's gonna have ace king too often because that hand's mostly gonna want a four bet. So I fire out for 120. Opponent does make the call. We're going to the river. It is the three of spades, not great. Opponent checks it over. We're just gonna check this one back. And we do lose to ace king suited. Unfortunate final hand. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap it up. It is just about 9.30, so uh, that was one hour. I got back at 8.30, so an hour. We lost $2,000 in that hour, so pretty rough. Um, I don't wanna play anymore. I always have a rule if I play a hand very poorly. It's time to just rack up and go. That ace-king hand, I knew turn should've been a fold. I knew it. Heart of hearts. He's just never bluffing there, right? 
they're just never, ever, ever bluffing there. I know some of you guys in the comments are like, oh no, that's never a fold, but that's 100% a fold versus a racket player. But I couldn't find it. Got caught up in that nine removes a bunch of his value. And well, all the flush draws missed, but he's just got it. He's just got it every time. So that is really unfortunate, but we still booked a win. We cashed out for exactly $4,000. So an $1,800 win, nothing to scoff at, but the session was about nine hours. Yeah, so nine hours. Didn't quite hit 10, definitely didn't hit 12, but still feel pretty good about it. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm gonna put the bankroll numbers already up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this format. I'm probably not gonna do it again for a very long while because this video is gonna take me two days to edit. But please leave a like below, comment, bunch of stuff, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.